Greetings. In this tutorial, we will make a pendant and earrings from copper wire with a diameter of one and a half millimeters. The main elements of these set are the spirals that you see in the video. For a necklace, we need three pieces of wire one and a half millimeters in its diameter and 25 centimeters, 30 centimeters and 35 centimeters long. We will also need tools, wire cutters, pliers with smooth lips, round nose pliers and pliers with silicone sponges. Let's get started. First we take a wire that is shorter 25 centimeters long, and make the first ring with round nose pliers. Next, we will wind this wire very tightly into a spiral. To do this, we will take pliers with smooth lips. Since many dents and scratches can remain if we will use the round nose pliers. Carefully, tightly, one ring to another, we wind the entire wire in a spiral in full length. To make the tip of the wire fit well, we bend it a little and press it down. Thus we will make all three spirals. Take the next wire 30 centimeters long. We try to keep the inner diameter of the circle the same as that of the first element, I do it by eye. You can make a mark with a felt tip pen on the pliers, in which place you made the first circle. We change the tool, continue with pliers. The second element is ready. And we take a wire 35 centimeters long and do the same. We change the tool and wind the third spiral. For the next step, we need a hammer and anvil. I have several. After beating with a hammer, the wire becomes rigid, keeps its shape well, on the one hand, and on the other hand, the product becomes beautiful, after oxidation and polishing, a noticeable and beautiful relief and volume appear. Reminiscent of embossing. A jewelry hammer usually has two sides, one is rounded, the other is flat, we will work rounded. Take a hammer and gently beat evenly. It will be good if you have a piece of flat rubber to put between the anvil and the hard plane of the table so that the sounds are a little muffled. We beat off all our three details of the spiral. Here we have such a beautiful relief. Here are all three of them. Now along the way I wanted to make the tips of these spirals flat. This tip. This one and this one. We need to flatten them with a hammer and an anvil, that is. Tap them longer and more carefully on both sides. We bend the tip and tap a little until it flattens out. And we will do this for all three. We put the flattened ends back in place. Next, we need to prepare a few more details needed to assemble the products. Three segments with a diameter of 1 mm, 15 cm long and two segments 25 cm long. We will beat them now, as well as the main three spirals, on the anvil with a hammer. 
Let's do everything one by one. We try to make it so that the relief flat on one side is clearly visible. From these two wires 25 centimeters long, we need to make a fastener, a lock and an ring, which we will then attach to the ends of the pendant. We take one piece of wire 25 centimeters long and we will make a hook. We bend it in half. The wire has become stiff due to the fact that we beat it off. So we bend it. With the help of pliers it is convenient to press it properly. And now with the help of round nose pliers we give the shape of a hook. Here is a hook. We will stop at this for now. When the pendant is ready, we will finish it. We will clamp the ends of the cord with these pieces of wire. Now from the second segment of 25 centimeters we will make a ring. In the center, we bend the wire and make a ring with round nose pliers with a diameter of 6 to 8 millimeters. That's the way. At the moment we have eight details, a ring and a hook, three spirals, and three more beaten off wires of 15 centimeters each, with which we will make nice separators between the spirals. When we start to assemble later, everything will become clear. Why do we prepare all the elements in advance? We need to oxidize, pattern it, them all, because after we collect all of them on a cord, and we will not be able to do this without damaging the cord itself. There are many ways to pattern it copper. There are several methods. I use a liquid for blackening non-ferrous metals. This is a solution of sodium chloride and sulfuric liver. For patination in this way, you can use either a glass or plastic container, and also an artificial brush. Oxidation is fast. Copper oxidizes well. I will explain other oxidation methods in another video. Do not be afraid to get your fingers dirty, they are well washed off, although it is an acid, so take care of your eyes. Wash your hands immediately afterwards. Avoid getting drops of the solution on your clothes. The amount that I dropped, about a teaspoon, here is enough to oxidize the entire surface of our piece as well. Don't let the black color scare you, this is what it is now. After we wash and polish everything, there will be a very beautiful oxidized copper color. We look carefully so that everything is covered with a solution and there are no gaps. Well, it's ready. Next, we will thoroughly wash it all in running water. You can use an old toothbrush and dish soap. We will continue to work with clean details. The color of the blanks after washing is not the same, this is normal. They need to dry, wipe with a dry cloth. We can start polishing. After this we will get a beautiful color. The relief will be visible and the details will take on an antique look. Let's get started. Polishing is an important step. After that, all parts will be ready for assembly. If you are a complete beginner, you may not have a trimer, drilling machine, then you can use an abrasive surface, soft fine sanding sponge or paper from hardware stores. It must be the smallest. You can also use nail buffs for polishing nails. The main thing is that the abrasive surface must be very, very small so that it does not scratch the wire. On the example of one part, I will show how it works. You can see how the color changes. In the pits and hollows, it remains dark, and the convex places begin to shine. Thus, a beautiful relief is obtained. The future product will look outdated. We process every detail from all sides so that everything is beautiful. We try to reach all hard to reach areas.
For example, spiral rings that are slightly recessed can be lifted up with fingers to clean properly. We bring to a state that pleases our eye. Hands will get dirty. You need to wash them quite often. Very beautifully one can polish even without a drill. If there is a drill, we use special nozzles and polishing pastes. They come in different shapes, softness and sizes. We will polish with a felt bullet shaped nozzle. It is necessary to use polishing pastes such as goy paste or diamond paste. We start at low speed. We took a little paste on the polishing nozzle and clean the part. Of course, with the help of a trimmer, the speed and quality of processing is much higher. Treated areas shine more. This is how we process all the details, bringing them to the final shine. After that, be sure to thoroughly wash all the workpieces in warm running water with an old toothbrush and dishwashing detergent. See what the blanks turned out to be. A non-uniform color will look very nice in the product. Now we start assembling the necklace. You can use suede cord or suede substitute for this product. I have it brown and 4 mm by 2 mm in size. I took 90 cm and folded the cord in half. We will cut off the extra pieces after trying on the product. Take the largest ring, our first spiral, it will be at the bottom of our pendant. We pass the cord to the it center. See that the beaten off flat tip is on the left. And here in this place we must make a twist from one of the 15 cm wires that we prepared in advance. Each such wire has two sides, one is beaten off, and beautiful, it shines, the second does not. We lay the wire with a shiny front side on the outside. We do this with the help of hands. I don't use a tool. Tightly laying each turn in parallel, we need six to eight turns. Then using pliers with plastic sponges, we can press and trim the rings. Now on the reverse side we need to finish. Bite off the excess with wire cutters. We press and carefully monitor so that nothing is warped. The next ring. We look so that the beaten off end also remains on the left. Now let's weave a little. We take the upper cord and thread it into the center from above, and the lower one into the center from below. That's the way. And now our next connection should be here. We connect. Carefully connected and now we continue to do the same with the next third element. Also make sure that the tip is on the left. We pass the upper cord inward from above. The lower one, to the center from the back side and fasten it. We will trim all this, cut off the extra ends, the lower part of the suspension is ready for Almost everything is ready. It remains to fasten the hook and loop fastener at the ends of the cord. Now we will measure and leave the length that we wish. I left 30 centimeters on each side and cut off the excess ends. Now we need to finalize the hook and ring. In this place we make rings. Spreading the ends on both sides of the hook. We bite off the ends with wire cutters. We carefully round the rings so that there is no gap. This is how the hook should look like. We do the same with the loop. We bend a little. Make roundings in different directions from the loop. Cut off the ends with wire cutters. Straighten. Of these segments, 
In fact, we need not four, but only two. We will make two more details, spirals, connectors, which we put on the ends of the cord. With the help of round nose pliers, we make a ring with a diameter of three or four millimeters and wind seven turns of the same size in a spiral. Inside the spiral, three or four millimeters. We bite off the excess. We do two pieces. Of course, you can use ready-made fittings, but it is usually difficult to guess with the color. It is better to do the whole product at once. Then the main elements and limit switches connectors will be the same color. Further, we need to bend one ring from these connector, it gives us chance to put hook and ring. Now we take one end of the cord. For density you can bend about one centimeter and put it on trailer coil on this suede end. You need to push the end as far as possible. The excess is easy to cut off. Now, with the help of pliers, you need to properly fix the spiral and center it. As you may have guessed, on this ring edge we need to attach a hook on one side. And on the other hand, we also put the trailer connector. This trailer will be with a ring, the second part of the clasp. Gently put on. Press. Center. It turned out a nice stylish pendant and lock. You probably noticed that while working on the table there were additional spirals that I had prepared in advance. From two spirals we can make two earrings that will complement and decorate our pendant. I already showed all the technique when we made the pendant. Similarly, we will finish with earrings. We still have scraps of suede, which we use. We need two pieces of six to seven centimeters. We thread the future earrings inside, align and secure with wire. We even have two unused beaten of wires left. We fix it the same way as we did it in the necklace. Look, we need to finish the earring right way. In this place, at the top, we need to make a ring on which we can fasten an earring fastener. Therefore, we will now bite off the lower end on the back of the earring with wire cutters, as we did with the necklace, then press it well with pliers. And on top of this piece of wire we will make a ring. Therefore, we boldly cut off the unnecessary protruding ends of the cord, and form a loop from the wire with the help of round nose pliers. We cut off the excess again, and put on the earring fastener. What a cute earring! We do the same with the second earring. The set is ready. We satisfied with the result. I am sure that you will succeed and you will gain experience, which will help you in future wire wrapping. Enjoy and see you in the next video tutorials.